Hello and welcome to Camera Central. Here we get to talk to some really awesome people and today we've got a special guest and that is Morgan Church. He runs a studio here in Cardiff called Teddy's Place. First of all, let's take a look at Teddy's Place and then let's get into that conversation. Oh, hey, Stu. Hey, man, how's it going? How's it going, man? You good? Yeah, so this is Teddy's Place. It's famous Teddy's, Teddy's Place. place. Welcome yeah? to Teddy's Place. Welcome. What, what are you trying to do here? What is this all about? So Teddy's Place is all about creating an environment where people in South Wales and the surrounding area, Cardiff and beyond, can come and make stuff in an environment that's actually really cool and relaxed and has a bunch of cool shit and just have fun. I can't swear, can I? Oh, you can swear. I'll just uh, bleep it out. Don't worry about it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so this is our little chill-out area, uh, which is downstairs bit. We've got a little library here. These seats are actually the original seats from the new theatre. Um, we'll get some sweet view over those, I'm sure. Um, and then upstairs this is where the magic happens. Probably can't say that either if you don't get a suit. Don't worry. Oop. Sorry, I was too quick. Too quick for you. Yeah, Steve. you're on board. You're on board. Keep going. Uh, so this is our beautiful cove area. There's the level swivel. There's the optic white paint. You can be able to see it. Um, natural light on full blackout because, you know, you need both, right? So what do you reckon this can be perfect for then? Perfect for any kind of like studio-based photography. We've had like fashion shoots in here, portrait shoots, people doing like band shoots for musicians, um, film-wise, music videos, even interviews and pieces to camera like this. Um, and we've also had loads of interest that people wanted to do some like podcasty bits in here and events. We're gonna start doing events soon. So loads of creative events, workshops, cool talks with industry professionals, not just from the photo industry, but other industries, fashion and beyond. Yeah, a bunch of stuff. Nice, so if you give us the story then, what kind of started? So basically, the, um, the main thing that got the whole thing started was, I've been doing sort of like creative stuff for about 10 years, as you know, Stu. And, um, you know, ever since I was a kid, I always used to come in here because my dad used to have a motorcycle workshop here, hence the motorcycle in the corner. Um, and I always thought that it'd be really cool to do something like have a studio in here. I thought it'd be the ideal space. And so I was chatting to a friend last year over a few beers. And uh, after a few more beers, we, uh, we decided it would be a good idea to open the studio. So I did it, I took the plunge and here we are. And then um, now we've got this little studio space. So that was the gist of it. After a chat with a friend, he kind of motivated me and was like, yes, you can. And then I was like, Okay then. I think I can. No. I think I can, so I did. So I think the biggest thing when it comes to this place is how big, wide open it is, but you also said that it's blackout as well, so. Yes. Yeah, so basically we have like beautiful natural light at pretty much all times of the day. So morning like we're at now, it's about what, half eight, nine o'clock, something like that. And um, it's a, like a really nice soft light in the mornings. But then what's really cool is in the evenings, we get this beautiful, like golden hour that literally comes right in through these windows. Oh, of course and it does, because it sets over in that only direction, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's beautiful. I'd love to see it like that. You're gonna have to send me some photos. I will, I've got some cool photos. You've got some cool photos. And then for Blackout, we've had like, I say, we had like a, a brand come in and do a fashion shoot with a um, really cool photographer called Chris Floyd. Um, and his, his assistant top, and um, the, the way they lit it was beautiful. They blacked it out and had this amazing setup, which was just really, soft and flattering so it's really versatile space yeah um yeah i think that's the point of the studio is to keep it as versatile as possible yeah and i think it's going to be cool to run some workshops in here maybe so hey what a good idea yeah, we what totally a good should idea. do that segway <laughs> <laughs> so we've actually known each other um a, a long time surprisingly because how yeah. this came about is harry um who handles wales and west um he uh, he mess we were talking about possible people to bring on um, your name came up, and I was just like, okay, that's cool. It's Morgan, he owns a guy, he, he runs a place called Teddy, uh, yeah. Teddy's Place, of course, and um, he gave me your number, so I texted you, and then it started coming up as Morgan Church, and I was just like, <laughs> wait a second, I know this guy, um, this is crazy. Likewise, you texted me, and the name came up, and I was like, oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a but minute. But the last place I saw you was like, I, I was doing a job at the NEC and halfway to that, I was, I was getting a train because, you know, I don't drive, which doesn't really make me an adult. Um, <laughs> what's it called? I, I was halfway to the NEC and I had a, 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 a change and I just random met you at a Shelby random at a coffee, coffee shop. shop. Where I happened to just be having a coffee. Yeah, no, into a coffee it's weird. Shop. It's, it's, it's crazy. Was, that was the weirdest thing. It wasn't even like you saw me in 
Cardiff. No. It was, yeah, and I hadn't seen you for years at that point. I seen you years. And then, what, a month or so later, Harry, by coincidence, yeah. But there's my name up. But there are like several other levels to this. So at the time when I first met you, mm. I actually worked as a salesman inside of um, Cardiff Camera Centre. Well, that yes, was right, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, correct. Um, and we we started talking, and I, when I was working there, I was always looking at ways to start get started doing uh, video in terms of like my day to day. That's my full time job, so that's what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and we were talking, we were, we were like talking about you know what we can do together, what, you know yeah. all of this, and the place you showed me at that time. Yeah, where well, I had a little office. I had a little yeah. office where my edit suite was. Yeah. And it was funnily enough, upstairs from where the studio now is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I totally forgot because when you came a few weeks back to look at the studio initially, you were like, I know exactly where this place is. And I was like, oh yeah, you came to the you came to the office years ago. Like, it's it's mental. Because yeah. when I first got told where it was, I was just like, okay. And I, I live, probably will cut this out. I live just around the corner for a minute as well. Yeah. So it's like yeah. literally like a five minute walk this morning. Um, Probably Crazy. need to not tell people where I live, to be fair. But, you know, it's what it is. That's vegan. Um, it's that's vegan, vegan enough. Enough. Um But, yeah, no, it's... it's you live on awesome. the 42... Um, Can we not? The, no, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, you guessed it. That's the correct <laughs> That's the correct number, anyone who actually is listening. Um, but, yeah, no, so that's, so that's crazy. Um, but at the time, you were looking to get into video yourself. You've had your own creative career yeah. through all of that, which, yeah. you know, your own journey, and it's crazy that we've now met again and you know you're you're going to the next stage and kind of what you're what you're doing and i'm now doing this back at camera center so <laughs> hey full circle man full, full circle. circle well i'd like this this particular role that i have at camera center is amazing because i get to do the thing that i've always really enjoyed over everything and that's talk about cameras yeah i've always been a massive fan of cameras massive i feel like dog. anyone who's in any kind of yeah. creative field where you use cameras loves talking about cameras and gear exactly everyone's a secret gearhead I'm it, just saying exactly. that's what I think everyone's a secret gearhead and I get to create all these like fun videos because I just um, came off of FPV Drone Fest recently and the video's been performing cool. really well actually amazing um, and it was just a lot of fun to be fair I, I flew my that. first drone did you? First How FPV did you it? drone. It was like this little bug, like kind did of thing. Around? Are we, is that going to be your new, your new thing? That I don't know. I it's do want to be... get one. I might get. I might get like this thing called a. Whoop. It's going to be Furby FPV. Fur, 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 Furby FPV. FPV. Well, this is it. What I'm going to be doing is uh, I've already got Furby photo set up where I'm going to okay. put like photos from like the videos I create in because right. there are some cool photos and rather than just being in the reels and then Furby Furby DOP, which will be. A video and then maybe do Furby FPV. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't got <laughs> no, the really reaction challenged. speed to do it because there was an eight year old, an eight year old uh, FPV they pilot. Put to shame. He put everybody to shame. Yeah, it's mad. Like starting that like, young, and you could see how proud his father was. Of I was going to say it's like, but it's like one of those things that I think the younger you start doing it, the more you're going to tune your. Reac you're gonna you're develop reaction, reaction times too. And well if you think about it like more and more kids these days i'm sounding like my father which is like my father and my mother <laughs> you know the kids you're not gonna end up playing computer games for the rest of your life and i i didn't i know a lot of people that still do yeah. um but like kids these days <laughs> they play a lot of computer games so it That's kind true. of Feel, like feel, isn't it? You're going to see That's more it. and more epic yeah. fpv pilots kind of got a little bit off track there but but Hey, it's all it's all relevant to the creative world and the current creative yeah, state yeah. and the creative industry. So yeah. I love it. Fair enough. So what do you th say? See, we're gearheads. We're going to end up talking about gear. So. I mean, this is it. I mean, this is what I want with the podcast. I do want a little bit of like deviation from subject, or you know, a little bit of of fun. We can talk about gear. Talk about the creative kind of industry yeah. in general. Exactly. Um, so, what do you think about the creative industry in Cardiff? Because you actually live in Bristol right now, but the studio is in Cardiff. Is yeah. that right? So I'm obviously Cardiff born and bred. Um, lived in Cardiff most of my life uh, for the last four and a half years, five years, where I went off to Cheltenham for a few years yeah. uh, for work, uh, working in a creative agency there in, in a brand, and then moved to Bristol to be kind of closer to Cardiff um, for a new job, but also because I wanted to be closer to Cardiff for the studio. Um, now, the reason I wanted to be closer to Cardiff as well and have the studio in Cardiff was because, as you say, talking about the, the the card of creative industry at the moment i think it is i think it is buzzing i think people underestimate how buzzing cardiff is maybe i'm biased maybe i'm biased but i do think that you know there's a lot of talent a lot of creative talent not just in photography not just in film but a lot of creative talent in general yeah. in cardiff 
um, really cool brands, people starting cool fashion brands. Um, you know, you've got like Veil, Keems, all of yeah. those guys. Um, uh, and, and there's really cool, like photog like independent photographers and they're, they're like kind of starting to grow and, and do some cool yeah. stuff with other big brands. And, and those people in Cardiff are then starting to work with people outside of Cardiff. And so Cardiff's becoming this kind of hub for yeah. creative stuff. And so I feel like it needed that, that space. Yeah, hundred percent. So that's why I've ended up opening it. I, I think I think it's a really good idea. To be fair, and I, I, I'm 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 with you in this when it comes to Cardiff in general. I do think it's going to be a centre for the creative industries for a long time because I think yeah. what you're seeing is like, and this is not to badmouth Bristol. I'm actually from Somerset, so don't get offended anyone from Bristol. <laughs> Probably would because there's this weird thing between Bristol and Somersetians. Anyway, before I get distracted, um, I do think Cardiff is rapidly going to become um, the centre of creative industries um, in the UK eventually it will yeah. i think london and i think uh, bristol and the other areas have gone through their time mm. um and they just started to get more and more expensive when it comes to yeah. it yeah absolutely i think that's that's exactly it you hit the nail on the head <clears throat> they'll always be i think london you have yeah, to, it always just be always will be london and it'll have its thing and that's that's great um you know that that's a, that's that's cool as well there's nothing wrong with that but we're already seeing particularly in say film and tv productions move away from London to South Wales yeah. because there's more of a variety of, of locations. Yeah. Um, plus they've still got big sound stages here. Like, you know, we've got the, the Pinewood have set up sound stage, Bad Wolf, lo loads of them. And, but we're also like, we're also now seeing following that, like the smaller, like creative brands or even, even brand, like even big brands who want to come and shoot in yeah. South Wales because there's, there's more of a choice of locations. And um, and so if we can offer them, obviously like mm. other creative spaces, I like understand. like a versatile studio space or venue space, then hopefully we'll be able to like promote that for. Well, if Cardiff. you look at if you look at Wales in general, um, in such a small area, what you've got is you've actually got closest to Swansea. You've got dunes, so you've got like a desert kind of area. Like right. in Cardiff by itself, you've got you know some streets that look like they could be from Brooklyn. Some streets you know look from like anywhere else in the world. Like you know, yeah. um, it's it's a, it's an incredibly unique city in its kind of makeup super and kind of what we can create out of it. And super versatile. Yeah. I mean, if you look at just like Wales as a whole, like where else can you go where you've got all of those different scapes and landscapes and environments and locations all within anywhere you go within like half an hour's drive maybe an hour's drive you've got every location you could possibly want yeah no 100 um, so uh, yeah yeah, it's just one of those, it's just it just one of those things, sense, right? Yeah. So probably to uh, add a little bit of a subject when it comes to uh, cameras and stuff like that, kind of what camera gear have you used in the past? What do you use currently? Mm. You know, what what's what's your loadout? Because when we first met, you were Lumix, and I remember yeah. being a Sony fanboy, being like, "Why is he shooting Lumix?" Yeah. Well, I went through a bit of a transition because I initially, like, when I very first started shooting in my sort of um, in my teens. I was just shooting Canon, everything Canon, because yeah. I loved Canon. And that was back when Canon were the, they yeah, were yeah. on top oh, still, they were still on top. I started there as well, and, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. And then, then you know, Panasonic and Sony started to kind of go yeah. into that kind of video field. And they, they were, at that point, they were kind of still head and head. They were kind of level. And um, and then I think as soon as Sony brought out the A7S II and, and onwards from there, they just absolutely wiped the floor. So I've, I've primarily shoot Sony now yeah um, so uh, when I was in-house for for the brand I was working with we made sure we invested all in Sony kit that was a7 s3s fx6 fx9 um, and then on bigger shoots we would obviously hire like you know it might be that we hire like a Venice 2 yeah. or um, you know mini LF yeah. or stuff like that which are great cameras they're, they're like they're cool and I like what Sony have done with this like how do you make this camera like small like an a7 but like still be a big cinema camera let's yeah. just attach the brain to the back <laughs> yeah, right. of the person that's operating it it's and nuts. then just, it's, it's a it's a really it's cool nuts. kind of like setup yeah, for it to be fair. it's a really cool it's a really cool um cool idea and it's you know they're, they're great cameras so sony's color science is is really beautiful um you know and i i, I obviously when you're doing sort of VFX heavy stuff, it is nice to have an Alexa. Their color science is wonderful, but I just feel like 
Sony's just got it going on, man. Yeah, they're, they're just have... killing it. They're killing well, it. we were actually talking um, recently about the creator, which is something we actually haven't actually talked right. on this podcast at all about, which I should have, like, because that's an actually a really interesting. Especially if we're Sony fanboys, we're sitting here, yeah. we have to talk about the creator because it's wild that the whole thing. I mean, Gareth Edwards is fantastic anyway. Yeah. Um, anyone who doesn't know, he's, he's the guy who's done like monsters and. Um, one of the Star Wars films he directed, he's done loads of other stuff, but his thing is he always likes to uh, do kind of the visual effects himself and shoot things in a really accessible way. Yeah. The creator, if you have seen the trailer, which we have, and it's unbelievably it's stunning, yeah. um, the crazy thing about it is it's all shot on the FX3. Uh, it's wow. mad and if you actually have a look at the trailer I might actually just see if I can put like a put little a little thing so it doesn't get like complex, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but, it's, it's... Um, but um, in terms of it's like internal makeup and kind of what they've done out of it absolutely stunning and like what's he called um, you know I've, I've <laughs> I technically have an FX3 it's Gav's camera he's my business partner outside <laughs> of it but um, the camera I've always been a massive fan on, despite still shooting on my A7S III, which I love. I think it's a workhorse, but they've just stopped updating it now. And this is why yeah. the FX3 is like pulling ahead. I mean, the FX3, especially with the firmware updates they've now put in there. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Wild. But if you consider that, okay, so FX, the fact that, you know, the cinema industry is embracing the FX3 more and more these days. Yeah. But if you pair that, have you, do you watch much Corridor Digital? All right, so Corridor Digital uh, challenged their special effects artist to yeah. create a sci-fi movie yes. in eight days. Eight days it was. And um, if you consider kind of what you would have to do outside of usually creating something as good as what... I mean, it wasn't perfect. Yeah. But, like, as good as what it, he got out of it... It makes the point. Mad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's 100%. Wild. And I think, like, that's, that's the thing for me. If we couple all of this technology that's that's becoming more accessible to people yeah. and, and allows people to create in a in a much easier more fluid way um, and then have like a space that they can do that in 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 south wales yeah. and kind of promote that kind of thing i think that's what that's what excites me the most about 100%. and that's what's excited me most about having teddy's places i'm meeting all these people doing these creative things and they're, they're all completely different projects they're working on yeah but they're all kind of there, there, there's new ways everyone's got yeah. a new way or a different way of working and and it's really interesting to see people you know embracing things like the a7s to the fx3 yeah. and and you know shooting mirrorless for stills on like big campaigns things like that that when we as we say when we first met were probably less sort yeah. of you know, they see they were kind of a novelty. Oh, 100%. I mean, Whereas when we now, first met, like, like reels weren't a thing. I think Snapchat yeah. was about, that was about it. But, yeah, like, it you know, um, it, it's mad. It's, there's, there's this, there's this saying, um, which I quite like, um, and it's kind of entirely off the track of what we've been talking about to a certain extent. <laughs> um, and that is, um, history doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. Yeah. Do you get yeah, what I mean? So, like, it's the idea of that. Quote. Yeah, no, there are certain things that have a very cyclical nature to kind of like how, yeah. you know, events happen in the world or whatever, but it doesn't always happen the same way it rhymes, you know, it rhymes. So that's kind of what I think interesting yeah. about that. So it's that's like us, so us meeting again, like after this time, also me working back at Gamma Center, you know, doing the YouTube See. stuff and, you know, you it still, rhymes, man. it just rhymes, man, but it's entirely <laughs> different kind of setup because exactly. I'm doing something that I ultimately love doing. You're yeah. doing something that you ultimately love doing after going through a time where, you know, you've been through a lot, you've done, a, you've done everything you wanted to do necessarily. We've had, you know, we've had, we've had a career sort of thing, haven't we? We've had yeah. our careers and, and, and gone on and done things and yeah. done loads of stuff since then, you know. That's just that's, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. I only just thought about how true that is about kind of like what we're talking about now, but also you know everything in general. Like, because yeah. like even when you consider it like matching up to um, actually going to the office, you you know where yeah. Teddy Place is now. Yeah, like it's mad. It's, yeah, exactly. yeah. Don't repeat like, yourself, but just sure does rhyme. It sure does rhyme. But go, again, I I will give you another quote, which oh. I learned, which going back to what we were talking about yeah. with the technology, right? And, and where it's where it's come from, where it's going, um, and it's a re I really like it. It's actually a quote by John Lasseter, from, yeah. who was the Pixar guy, um, and it's the art inspires the technology, and the technology inspires the art. 
Okay. Which I think is really interesting. That's prevalent, interesting. Especially with the current state of, you know, yeah. with, with I mean, AI and stuff. Everyone, I don't want to go down that road. I, like, well, it's one of those things. <laughs> I, I might actually end up forcing you down that road a little bit. Oh, God. Okay. Um, no, so doing this podcast, talking to a lot of creatives, talking to some incredible people, um, and AI is obviously a big subject uh, in our day-to-day lives as creatives, because a lot of people are being like, are we going to be still relevant? But what you said there basic, is basically kind of the way I, I, I'm seeing where it goes, and what a lot of people seeing where it goes is, you know... It, they kind of affect each other, you know, science, art, technology, you know, they kind yeah. of all flow um, together. But the other side of it is, you know, we can, there can be an AI out there that will create art, right? But will that art ever mean something? Yeah. The past a certain point. Mm. Because if you've got somebody that makes an amazing painting, spends 10, 20, 50 hours creating it, I right? think, yeah. That's completely unique in every way, shape, and form. And yes, AI can do it, but it doesn't necessarily have that emotion emotion attached to it. And yeah. it will never it will never be the same. And it's what's interesting about photography um, is that with certain people that do photography, they try and get certain meanings and certain kind of like portrayal of stuff out of it. Mm. One of my favorite photographers, and if you actually look at his photos, yeah, they're mad, they're absolutely mad. But this guy called Rabbit's Analog. So shoots analog cameras, okay, cool. and they are pff, like seriously, know. seriously crazy See, I photos. Love that. I love that. Yeah, but I like I like it when the meanings applied to stuff in art, and I think that's always going to be the case. I think that, that that's the thing. Meaning, meaning in art often comes from context, yeah. and I think that the person who produces the art, the fact they've produced it straight away gives it a lot of context. You know, whatever, whatever journey they've gone through to get to that stage in their kind of creative uh, expression that's the context and that's what gives it meaning but if you get AI to do that and it's just kind of using some sort of algorithms or whatever you want to call it I'm yeah. not going to profess to be a computer scientist yeah. but it loses that context and don't get me wrong there's there's definitely something to be said for people experimenting with AI as a tool in yeah. creative and you know I'm and it's, not, it's, it's always gonna be a tool it's always gonna be a tool but but you know I'm not naive enough to think that it's gonna blow up and it is gonna make a lot of jobs maybe more difficult to to mm. do in the old school because I think people are stubborn and they will almost they'll go with the easiest path sometimes yeah. not everyone but some people will go the easiest path yeah. and so they will you will get those people who jump on the ai by mind and think well why would we pay this person to do it when we can just get out of it but i do think that that will kind and of you do see that you do see that with yeah, um, ads in general because they like there will be ai ads thrown at me all the time well, but do you know what i never relate to them as much as what you'd see out of it actually somebody putting time and effort yeah. into it yeah because there are a bunch of them where it's just like this is a bunch of content put together from some stock site yeah. being like, oh, exactly. it's this not. this Apple technician got kicked out and he created this new technology which is right. going to change the industry. Just use like that generic kind of fucking ad voice, you know? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> exactly. swore, but... but it's that's the thing. It's like, I, but going back to you saying it's always going to be a tool, I think that's kind of the, that's the, that's the thing. It's, it's going to be a tool, but I think that you'll always get those people who will want to go to a studio and shoot photography yeah. because they have a passion for it. And they're still going to do that regardless yeah. of whether AI is there. No. And like, I, 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 and this is what I'm saying. This is why I, I think yeah. photography and videography will always be there. I mean, if it was if AI is the end all and be all of all this, then why is analog photography becoming more more right. important? It's, it's, why is all these other older retro life forms? It's because we're at a time where technology is so advanced. We that... just want something tactile, something tangible, something real, yeah. something authentic. And and again, not everyone. I'm not I'm not suggesting everyone's gonna be no. like, oh, I need to pick up a camera and do something real and physically like go out and shoot stuff. But I feel like there will be, like you say, history doesn't repeat itself but it sure does rhyme yeah and and so people might find u- new and unique ways in which to uh create things whether yeah. that's with ai or whether it's going back to 
yeah, you know, more classic ways of doing things. Yeah. And I think there's always going to be a place for everything. It's a crazy ride. We're going to see where it goes over the next yeah. few months and years, I'm sure. Well, no, it's, it's, it's definitely an interesting time to be alive. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's, it's one of those things where we're going to be learning a lot over the next couple of years as to kind of like how the world is treated, but also like technology and everything like that. It's an interesting time and in like AI, I think somebody that covers the subject that I'd like watching here and there called Philip DeFranco. He's another YouTuber. Yeah. Uh, like, um, you know, whatever, like, I'll, like, side of the aisle you fit in, whatever. But um, what I like uh, about what he says whenever any kind of subject of AI comes up, it's um, this idea that AI is only ever going to be as bad as what it is now. Yeah. You know, because it's always going to get better. But I don't, I don't see it, you know, it's one of those things. It's like... Yeah. It's, it's like the millennium. Do you remember the millennium virus? You yeah, know, yeah. Where all of the, the computer is going to be like breaking yeah. down in the millennium. Um, in the 2000, you know. Um, it's just one of those crazy I think things. All we, can, all we can do is speculate, right? Yeah. And, and keep doing our thing. That, I like, it sounds like really ignorant, I guess, but, but ignorance is bliss in that regard. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. to kind of like touch on what we've just said yeah. um, and kind of merge it all together into kind of like one thing, what I think is going to be amazing in yeah. this current generation of people is that they're going to have so many tools at their disposal with like digital cameras. That I agree with. Um, like you, so we're talking the FX3, right? So the FX3, the A7S3, all of these cameras, um, they give you the quality to be able to get a good shot out of it. But then yeah. with these tools that are coming out, you're going to be, have the ability to be able to realize your dream in creating the next Star Wars or, you yeah. know, your fan film or, you know, add special effects, take people to a different universe, you know. Yeah. You're going to have so many tools at your disposal. And I think in terms of being in a time when it comes to like being alive in a creative environment, I think these next couple of years are going to be the most interesting that you're going to ever see because people will go either embrace analog or they'll embrace this new level of um, tools and technology um, in combination with real world shooting. I think that's yeah. always going to be the case because it's a, it's a social occasion because you can by all means get an AI to be able to create like episodes and movies and everything like that. But, you know, and I think one of the things that I've noticed on this channel is like the videos that tend to do better, are the ones that are done with people either collaborate with the community a little bit more yeah. or, you know, they, we, we, I, like the FPV video, um, drone fest video, which I just did. Okay, long story short, I think that it is going to be the most interesting time to be a part of the creative community. I oh, think for sure. You're going to find people that will give up on it because they're scared of AI or whatever. But I think you're going to find more people embracing it because of these new tools. And I think you've hit the nail on the head there. That's the key word is community. Yeah. And I think, honestly, if people want to make something authentic and build something authentic, then they have to, like, you have to build a community. And if you're doing something authentic, you organically will build that. Yeah community around 100%. it right so it's like any any business whether it's creative or not if you're if you're or any brand you know any anything somebody's doing even if it's you know their personal brand people talk about personal yeah. brands these days if you're doing something authentic and you're doing something that you're genuinely passionate about then you're going to build that community and i think that if you you know it doesn't matter if you are if if people are using ai as a tool as long as they're as long as they're using it to achieve something that is that is still authentic yeah. to them and, and what they are actually doing and achieve, authentic to their mission and their goals. So, you know, I, I'm a big fan of mixing like digital media with analog media. Yeah. So a lot of my photography work, I'll also do a lot of 3D graphics with, a lot of my film work I'll also do. You know, yeah. I, like uh, a lot of the campaigns that I've worked on have also had like, uh, we've included a lot of VFX stuff in them and, and compositing or yeah. some kind of post-production. Um, and of course, there's a lot of tools in AI that make that easier now. But I think um, I think as long as what you're doing with those tools is still authentic, yeah. then that's you know, and you and you remain a, then you remain a part of that creative community. Yeah. Is what I'm trying to say, um, in a long-winded way. In a long-winded yeah. way. No, I think I think it's you know, wow, that got deep, man. It got real deep. It got, it got real, real deep. deep. Sorry, I, lo I, lo I love a good Sorry. deep conversation. DM but we DMC. also talked about tech, so that's one of the most important things. Let's... What advice? Because 
we've you know we've pretty much talked over the entirety of the creative industry as it is okay. what advice would you give um a young creative or somebody that's looking to get into a creative field when they're just starting out because you've been through all of this see? yeah i genuinely i would say and i know this sounds cliche but make stuff and i mean make stuff that you want to make um and don't wait for permission so you know, even if all you have is your phone or, you know, there's that old saying of the best camera is the one you have with you. And that's yeah. very true. And I think just go out and make stuff, whether it's with your mates or on your own, make stuff that you enjoy making. Yeah. Look at look at artists and other creatives that inspire you and be inspired by them and just unapologetically make stuff. Don't be scared if it looks terrible to start with, because yeah. it will. When you first do anything, it's going to be terrible. Um, and that's great because that means you've learned yeah. and then you can learn from it and keep going but just keep making stuff and yeah just honestly just start just keep yeah. making stuff for you and then if you're making stuff for you the more you enjoy the work that you're doing the better your work is going to be yeah. and that that's honestly it and then eventually you'll you'll get into you know you'll find your first client or you'll yeah. find your first job that's my genuine belief that's that's really good i like that sick <laughs> you killed it man you're all nervous but you killed it. I appreciate it. So how that. you feel? This is your first podcast, is it? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Well done. Thanks, bro. You've done good. Thanks for having me, Pleasure man. This has been board. great. Oh, hundred percent. And you know, I'm I'm really enjoying this podcast. To be honest, it's with been you. good fun. It's just a lot of fun. Hey, we will have to continue these conversations, man, because oh, I feel always. like we've just skimmed the surface. Oh god, yeah. We need to yeah. have. We're, even if we do it off camera, off mic, yeah, we'll have yeah. to continue these. Uh, what we do is uh, we'll get some alcohol-free cider or <laughs> alcohol-free <laughs> yeah. beer, and uh, yeah. we'll we'll sit down and. So that was the podcast with Morgan Church, a.k.a. the master of Teddy's Place. That's going to be his name now. I hope you enjoy. I've been really enjoying doing these podcasts recently, and I hope it's given you a kind of a new perspective on creativity, but also the camera gear that you want to get as well. Please make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. It really does help the channel as we continue to progress and get bigger. And I really look forward to seeing you next time. Next time on Camera Central Podcast. <laughs>